and welcome back, everyone, or a couple of you at least. We are doing something a more on the lines of tinkering tonight. I have recently um, configured and gotten a MIDI emulation going, and I really want to see how that uh, how that works. I, I'm having fun just playing with it, basically. Move my camera a little bit. There we go. Um, and... Uh, so the the basic premise is that you know most music in early '90s on DOS games uh, used MIDI, and if you're familiar with MIDI or not familiar with MIDI, it basically just an instruction set. It's like sheet music for a computer, right? It doesn't really. Um, that's pretty funny. Yeah, I'll get to that later. But the audio from my uh, surface is showing through my capture. Whatever. Uh, with MIDI music being basically just like sheet music for how to play notes, and then the device itself is the one that determines what actually gets played. Um, and that allows you to have a different noise or a different sound scape, if you will, for each device that's playing it. So most of us, you probably use the Soundmaster cards that had the OPL 2 or 3 chipset on it. So that's what you're familiar with, and that's what we'll test here in a second. Another option that you may have seen as well is the Roland series of devices, especially the MT32, the Sound Canvas, and etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. Um, yeah, so we'll go through that, Brian. Don't worry, I have a slide. We'll talk about this in a second. So, so anyway, the purpose of MIDI then is that you don't have to have the music in a file. So the MIDI file contains instructions on how to play it. So that's where sound fonts come in. So you can load a sound font on certain sound cards that will then change the instrumentation. All it's saying is to play this note with this sort of instrument at this time. That's that's MIDI music. So then it's up to the interpreter to do that. On a modern computer, that's down through software. But back in the day, it was down through the then legendary OPL chip, which is on most Soundmaster cards. Uh, OPL3 in general. Then they got rid of that later on. Um, when it wasn't needed anymore for MIDI playback, because then you're doing synthesized music at that point. So MIDI, again, it's just an instruction set. So what you can do with MIDI is you can send it back and forth. So that's what a lot of people do then when they were composing music back in the day. They would compose on a computer, and you can send it to your MIDI um, synthesizer or MIDI keyboard, and vice versa. You could play on it, and it would record and send instructions directly to um, your computer. So where the Roland devices come in is that when the correct configuration on your sound card is set up, it sends that instrumentation information out through wiring. And I'll show through a diagram here in a second. And uh, that means that you can use more advanced features. So that's where the uh, MT32, or the sound canvas, comes into play, where a lot of games actually were composed using those devices. But then, since those were expensive, those were musical equipment, super expensive. And they're expensive now because, again, retro craze. But we can emulate that stuff. So instead of buying the devices now, which you use go for several hundred dollars, uh, we can basically just do that through um, emulation instead. So I am going to show a uh, real quick just slide here. I know it sounds super fun, but what we did now, you didn't expect a lecture today, but you're getting one anyway. So what we did now is that we are... Um, yeah, I don't think I can show the mouse on here, but so basically I have our sound card on the left and we have a uh, MIDI out cable that goes into the game port of the sound card and that produces a circular kind of MIDI coupler. Um, I don't have one here right now. Yeah, here. So this is a uh, the MIDI interface cable. So it looks like a big PS2 cable. And again, this is used for musical production more than anything. So it just happens that you can use it for gaming. So that goes then into a USB interface on your computer, which is just a little dongle that you plug in. You have to buy these things separately. And what I do then is I pipe that back into the sound card on line end, which goes to the speaker out. So what that allows to do is that the game card is basically sending the instruction out to say, when this note needs to be played, send it out the MIDI port. On the computer that is emulating, it says, yep, here's the sound you should send back. So that's how you get that stuff. Normally then, that's handled all inside the sound card um, when you're messing with uh, and this is what the software looks like. I'll show in just a second here, actually, in, in, in action. But the idea being is that uh, all of it is um, handled externally then. So MIDI music is handled by an external device instead of on the sound card. That's what it comes down to. 
Um, so if we do just a quick example here now, we'll go to, uh, we're gonna uh, go to Duke Nukem 3D and we'll play it with the normal sound. That's annoying. Should mute that, but um, yeah. The, the drawback now, since I'm piping all the sound from my laptop to the line out, of course, I'm getting notification stuff. So I'll figure all that out. But I'm just testing this. Um, so normally you'd set up your sound blaster in here, and we're gonna do this just sound blaster AW32. Um, you know, we want. Just Sound Blaster. I guess we're not hearing it. I've been messing so much with the MIDI stuff now, and then here uh, the normal one. So this is going to be a much more of a uh, um, kind of figuring things out. Hmm? We're going to do this. Uh, no, we want to save settings. I am going to go to my config sys. I said auto exit bat. It's auto exit bat. Uh, what I need to do is look up my uh, sound master settings. Because I can't remember. So we have 330.620. There you go. So we're going to go into games. We're going to do 3D. And we're going to go set up. So what I'm trying to do now is set it back. Um, yeah. Well, in this case, this is on the physical hardware, so we'll do the Mr. Later too. Um, but this is actually on a, the P100, um, so this is a hardware. So the only thing emulated here now is the MIDI device itself. Uh, you could do all this on Mr., which we'll switch to later as well, but here this is running an actual computer, because I realized I had almost all the cabling to do this, uh, but I'm not going to spend $300 on a retro piece of equipment, uh, which is usually what the MT32 goes for, which is the uh, the Roland like any of the classic DOS games from the early 90s, they were all composed probably using the MT32. Um, so let's see, we're gonna go to sound music card again. 620, 330 now. No music. That's bizarre. Go with, uh, can we hear? That works, goodness. <laughs> oh, sound master then. Hmm, that's really weird. Uh, that should definitely uh, work. So now I'm trying to just switch it back to the normal setting, but... Let's try and launch the game and see what it does. have the uh nope no music my demo's going great so far <laughs> we can try a different game as well because th this does work with general midi the idea being is that you use general midi then and you pipe in that out so again you're just offloading all the the midi processing to an external device but this is really weird it is not uh Fascinating. Uh, CD SB16 mixer set. I have one thought. Let's see, MIDI is configured to run. So the thing here is that because I'm passing the data back in, I need a line in to actually be turned up, which it is here. But it doesn't give quite the same. Uh, uh huh. No, the MIDI in. Okay. Well, that's all. Uh, all good there. Let's try a different game. Doom 2 set up. Uh, there we go. Save settings run Doom 2. Let's see if it does. We're trying to just play normal music now. It's really odd that it's not doing any of that. Nope. Silence. Something on the system is uh, 
not set it correctly then, or because the plugin is there, it's assuming it's gonna go out, but... Again, I can get the general MIDI working, but as I said, this will be a tinkering episode, because uh, I switched everything over to use that, and it's worked really well so far. Uh, but of course, I haven't tried using the uh, Sound Blaster stuff, normal music, uh, since then. So actually, I go back to games, Doom 2, setup. Music card, we'll just do a uh, Sound Blaster 220. All right, try that. No music, that's really bizarre. I said I can go to General MIDI, but it loses the impact if I can't do the uh, um, SB, the comparison. So we have mixer set. We have AW util. And let's do look for executables. Diagnose. Uh, 220. Detecting card. So this is an AW64, so. Nope, we don't need to test it. 330 is fine. Verify the RQ low DMA channel and high DMA channel. RQ5. Channel 1. Prompted to select a high DMA channel. Uh, channel 5. Channel 5 set correctly. Audio functionality tests. Well, there we have synthesized music playing quietly, but. CT MIDI driver could not be found. Interesting. It's in the DRV directory underneath. Eight-bit testing. These are pretty classic sounds, but that's interesting. So we're actually missing the CT MIDI driver. All right, interesting. And we'll just quit out of this then. So CT DRV. There's the CT MIDI A and the CT MIDI S, but not the CT MIDI. Interesting. So yeah, I'm gonna be sneaky here now. Yeah, we'll try it. <laughs> uh, and that was diagnose again. I'm gonna go through all this again quick here now. Uh, I've been messing with this machine because it's the P100 and um, it has mostly it's Windows 95 stuff and I got the DOS stuff running on it, but I haven't really touched it much since then. Uh, but I definitely had this working before I plugged in all this MIDI stuff. And really the idea is that it's not supposed to be anything you have to mess with really. Once you have it configured, you should be able to swap back and forth. But in this case, clearly I'm not able to. Um, so let's see. There we go. I don't know what that was about. That's some groovy music too. Uh, okay, so yeah, we don't need to do any of this now. So we will quit now. Games, CD, Duke 3D, setup. Let's try that one more time. Uh, we will do AW32. We'll do music card, AW32, 620, 330. There we go. I know it's very quiet, but let me do uh should hear uh the music here, but I will turn up a little more. So this is the 
basically, um, <laughs> yeah, there it is fun to configure. That's half the the fun part about messing with this computer is just that to, you know getting it them working or whatever. So, so what you can hear now is the onboard synthesized music from um, the AW64, and this is how you'd listen to music if you're just playing with sound mixer settings. This is how you play the game. This is what it sounds like. Um, so let's uh, save this. We will test the game real quick. Let's make sure it actually works. We'll see the volume. The tricky part is messing with so many different ones. This is my Achilles heel, of course, is audio volume. So now we'll get into the real fun stuff. I think I know I need to not be above the yellow mark in OBS here. So this sounds like this is how I remember playing the game with this sort of level of uh, fidelity and this level of, like, sound. This is kind of what it sounded like to me. And I didn't really... That, that was cool. I mean, this is how you play it. And a lot of the ones you use... I think this uses a genuine OPL3 chip. If anyone is on that is familiar with the AW64, they might be able to unlighten me, but I'm pretty sure it just uses an OPL3 chip on board, which is why you get this uh, specific sound. Now, again, remember with MIDI, is because MIDI instructions are sent to the sound card, and the sound card is then processing it, which means that that's why you can get such vastly different computers. If I switch to the 46 now, it's going to sound different because it's a Soundmaster 16 versus an AW64, um, and they all use a different sound font set. And sound font again is just like, okay, what does a harp sound like? It sounds like this. Or this sound card it sounds like this. So now, uh, actually, let's check out Doom real quick too. I just want to make sure that works too. Doom two uh, setup. Uh, select music card. AW32. Now we should get... A Doom is pretty much louder, I've noticed, so we'll see here. Oh. That does not sound good. Apparently it failed. <laughs> Let's go back to Sound Monster Sound. I had to turn down the uh, audio to nothing, because, uh, yeah, it freaked out on me. Sound Blaster, there it is, 220. Let's try that again. It might be trying to use... Oh boy, it's not even let go. Ah, that is cool. Um, I wonder if I go back to uh, Duke Nukem 3D if it'll reset it. I'm guessing as a, uh, I think there's a hung note bug, is what it's called. Yeah, this is getting louder. Good thing I have it tuned down to nothing. So, uh, I believe that is a known bug with certain um, sound cards. Uh, we'll just reboot the machine, basically. There we go. With certain sound blasters, uh, where it has a hung note bug. And this is Sound Master 16 value. Um, on Sound Blaster, Sound Blaster AW64 value, so I have a feeling that's one of the problems with it, and the later revision fixed it, because I bought this real cheap. That's right, the AW32 was legendary, and uh, it's like the, the top sound card for back in the day, basically. Uh, I don't doubt that at all, so... I remember seeing it as huge, huge tracts of land! The uh, AW64 was, of course, the cut-down version, basically uh, mushing it together more for, you know, kind of decipher Windows 95. So let's try uh, Doom 2 again. I was curious if that was the fault of that or not. We have audio with this, but no music. <laughs> Let's try to set up again. Um, so the sound of Sound Blaster. This uh, 3:30. I'll try one more time. Nope, that's really weird. Um, either way, we're not messing with the standard sound tonight. We're gonna mess with the uh, MIDI sound. So. 
what I'm going to do now is I'm going to smack this thing up here and we'll see what happens when we select um, general MIDI. So what we're going to do now is basically push the audio out and doing general MIDI then basically means don't do any processing on board. Um, and we're basically saying what's the MIDI port? So 3, 330. So now we're basically telling it to send out. And if you look at the screen, the little white screen there now, you'll see if everything works. We should basically see initialization and then instrumentation. Oh, look at that. So what you get now, I wonder, I think I know what the problem is now. Let's see. Now it's on there, right? So, oh, I know the problem on this one. So every time I restart, the mixer goes down to nothing. So I said half of this is, is the tweaking SB16. I'm not sure why it's doing this, but even though I'm saving it, yep, line goes down to nothing, which is why. Yeah, thanks for uh, letting me uh, ramble on it, but uh, you will see now, now, the fourth try or something, we will go in and we will launch, and you should see the MIDI instrumentation kicking out on the surface here. There you go. So now it's running general MIDI through the sound device, and you can see the uh, spectrum analyzer on the thing not going. Let me know if you can hear that. So we'll do this. So it uses more advanced instrumentation here. So the goal here, you can see, basically assess what the instrumentation is. This is a picked bass. Um, and this is all being processed now. Basically, again, if you remember the, the flow chart, is that it's, it's probably a little too loud there. Boy, it's a hassle to adjust the volumes all the time. So basically now it is uh, doing all the MIDI processing off board. So the Soundmaster AW64 is just spitting it out, out the MIDI port. And then the emulation here now is taking care of that. So this would be kind of like general MIDI processing. And if you're going to be real fun, you can actually switch the instrumentation here on the fly. So if I want to do Grand Piano, I guess it's not kicking in there for that one, but what we can do is we can actually, uh, so this is like kind of general MIDI processing. So imagine this is just acting as a MIDI keyboard now. Uh, I mean, you can even play on here if you wanted to. And that comes across. It's it's basically just treating it like you're playing on a MIDI keyboard and, you know, wanting to record this or something. What we, excuse me, what we can do is we can load uh, VST plugins, which is basically specific sound processors. In this case here, we can do, um, this is a Yamaha one, which then sounds completely different. It uses an entire different sound processing setup, and that's mostly just like, how do I process the notes as they come in? So the Yamaha is a type of MIDI synthesizer, in this case here, the XG or GS. Um, and that's, it's interpreting the MIDI note differently. So now it's using this instrumentation setup to play the music. So, if we switch to the one that's probably the most famous from early, it would be, oh, we actually have to stop it first. Hang on, we'll do this. And we will go into, so now, this is the piano version of Doom 2. And we can find different, like, have some... A vibraphone? I think there's a gunshot one down here. Yeah, there we go. I think what happens is that once it... I'm telling the sound font to use that melod or that different sound. Not until the music is reinitialized. Basically, it goes through a cycle. It's, I think it's basically sent, like, the instruction set. There goes, there's a melodic tom. Let's see, I think there's an overdrive guitar in here somewhere. Synth brass. Trombone. Ooh, orchestra hit. There's a distortion guitar. So, I mean, it's... MIDI was like cutting edge at the time, right? But now we're gonna still use the synthesized music. 
about this, the idea of sound fonts and things like that um, is kind of past, right? And yeah, th this is basically what you're doing, right? Is you never had the gunshot one, no. But basically, what you're doing is you're doing the same thing you would on a, on a normal, like you know, synthesizer or MIDI keyboard. You can select the different sound effects. As a kid, when I had access to that, uh, of course, that was super fun to just do the claps and stuff like that. So, well, let's load the MT32 because that is probably the most known. Let me see if I can move this over here. But what I'm doing now is I'm basically just loading the. Uh, and it actually has an external processor for OPL3 as well, if you're so inclined, which would emulate that then. Um, now we're going to... I like to use the legendary MT32 and actually see the samples being sent here now. And then a lot of games were actually designed for this, so... Yeah, so here you have basically the full... Um, Instrumentation from the MT32. Which can sound a little tame too, but uh, we can exit out and restart it again just to make sure. But the one we pretty much have to go into is um, Doom 1. This might be a lot. I'm going to try and catch it here before it gets bad, but this game just seems to be... Let's see, do we have any sound at all now? It went just like quiet. So this is the MT32 version then of the... Hey Brad. So yeah, this is month... Um... So, I did mess with Munt first. What I found uh, through Phil's Computer Lab's excellent videos on these, uh, he ended up using the MIDI player, which you can use Munt, and what Brad's mentioning here is Munt is a dedicated MT32 emulator. Uh, so its intent is to basically only do, and I can switch over to that, to only do um, uh, the uh, MT32 and nothing else. And it does work great. The nice thing with MIDI player here is that just through plugins, it can spin up just about everything. Uh, which makes it really, really uh, nice and easy um, to to just configure everything. So now that said, I am still playing with this stuff. There's like a billion things you can configure on this, and you can make presets and everything. Um, so I have not uh, messed with everything on this. But then if I like turn off this now, it goes back to the general MIDI situation. Which right now, here's Doom on a grand piano, which actually kind of works. But then, you heard the music loop there. It basically went back to, um, goodness. So much adjustment of volumes. <laughs> uh, it just goes back to the cycle, which I'm assuming in here is where I'm a novice when it comes to the MIDI protocol. It probably sent the new list of notes coming. So then now it reset the new instrumentation, so it went back to the source of guitar. But you can see it in progress and everything. Um, So then if we engage the MT32 um, again, mode here. Yes. A lot of these seem to just use different instrumentation and it gets pretty messy. Uh, but if we go back to Duke Nukem. Uh, wow. Your birthday present? Was it a IOU for a PS5? Um, so now if we go into Duke 3D, and we set it up again. And we will go to choose music card and we'll do general MIDI 330. Now we'll test music card. We'll see that it kicks in here. And it sounds very, very distinct. Uh, and it's, it's, it's odd because some people, um, a lot of people uh, just like like the um, OPL sound effects, and I kind of agree too that they, they does have a certain charm to it. The um, kind of like design around um, my stream is still going. Here. There we go. Uh, that the the grungy 
dirty sound you kind of get from the original sound cards is also really, you know... <laughs> Thanks. Need to pop up there, let me send it to me. I'm uh, using NDI to stream my Surface tablet to my uh, OBS, so... Um, Either way, uh, it's, you know, it's kind of like there's no right or wrong, but it gives you a very different sound experience in a lot of these games. And I think it's really neat to experience that because um, you're kind of used to a certain sound, but then you switch to this and it sounds just totally different. Now, Duke Nukem 3D is pretty late for being MT32. You probably use general MIDI more for this in general. Let's see what the volumes are because now the volumes get really tricky. Because you're dealing with, like, multiple sound devices and who knows what. So we have to go up and turn up the audio in the game right now, I think, so. Uh, sound, music. But it sounds very smooth and very, uh, very different compared to, um, compared to what you would see from, uh, just the direct OPL chip on the sound card, so. Uh, I guess I'll do the normal spiel. If you're joining us late, we are working and messing with um, MIDI emulation on an external device using a laptop connected through MIDI cables um, from my uh, P100. This is a Pension 1 100, or sorry, not 100. The 166. This is the AST advantage. But it sounds just not always better, but it sounds just a little different. And it's funny because the MT32, I think, probably is going to be better suited for some older games. We'll check out in a minute. I was messing with these because they're pretty easy to set up. Yeah, piece of cake. Piece of cake. I'm Duke Nukem. Um, and it often takes a little longer to initialize it Damn. because... I'm going to turn down the... So you hear that now. So what you can actually see is really cool. I'll switch to this camera here now. You actually see... So yes, here's the laptop, of course, that's running it. But down here is the actual MIDI interface cable. You can see it blinking sort of poorly. That is what translating or handing off the instruction set back and forth between the sound card um, and the... Um, uh, and the um, emulation component. So that allows you to have that connection. Um, it's pretty funny because you can buy those devices um, pretty cheaply. I haven't tested one of the really cheap ones. This one is pretty funny because uh, just happened to have it around for forever ago. I'm not sure how old it is. Uh, it's a Yamaha connection, which again you use for actual synthesizer work. It just happens to work with this, but they're all pretty much the same in that sense. I don't think you want to buy the cheapest cheapest, but you can have the interface cables from your from your sound card those are like 15 to 25 dollars in general it seems like usually the sound blaster it's a game port connector on your sound blaster card or audio sound card in general um, and then you probably need like a coupler which is this thing that's just a you know female to female and then that goes into the usb component which can be basically what looks like to be 15 to 30 bucks as well so you know 50 to 60 bucks you probably can get this going Versus buying an MT32, which is one device, one device only, used. They're cool and wrong, but they're like 250 at least. And a good condition, even more. Um, and the thing with the emulation here, in this case here, you can do even more different sound devices. Like, I have not installed a Roland Sound Canvas SC55, which is probably the most famous one. You have to pay for that one. Uh, and Roland has put that behind like a paywall in their cloud, which makes it really annoying. Uh, so I put a whole bunch of other games in here. I can't remember what I put in now. So let me check out Dune 2. I think... Uh, did I set that up? So Dune 2 is one that was absolutely uh, made with MT32 in mind. So we have MT32 mode engaged now. I want to make sure I set that up. Set up questions. Uh, musical sound is... Sound cam. MT32 lap C1. So 5. Nope, don't use extended memory. So we'll try this. I haven't tried this one. See what happens. I see the connector going. Initialize an MP32. I see a signal going on on the device. So it, it does can take a little longer to load then, because you're basically saying like, hey, fire up, fire up the thing. 
and that's to send the instruction set over, which I'm assuming is part of sending the sound font and things like that, uh, which can take longer. So I see it blinking like crazy now. We'll see if it actually works or not. This is the first time I'm trying. Insufficient memory, no! Um, what I'm going to do is, I cheated with this machine, I'm going to reboot it. The thing with this machine is he uses, again, Phil's computer lab is a great resource, and he created kind of like a DOS bot boot menu that allows you to select things. In this case, I don't need the CD-ROM drive, so I go into not load it to save memory. Um, and he created a boot menu that lets you just select what you want on the fly. So you don't have to go in and edit your auto exec bat or config sys. Um, all you have to do is basically just pick your option on how much configuration you want. So, so we want uh, extended memory plus mouse. We'll do expanded memory plus mouse. Try that. So let's see how much memory we have now. 583, that should give us more. Uh, do we have any extended memory? Yeah, we have plenty of extended memory. We have conventional, upper, and this is where it gets fun, right? Because memory is just... Ugh. Everyone who worked on a DOS machine back in the day knows the, the issues you have with memory. So uh, what I need to do now as well, of course, is go in here and set up the line. And for those that didn't see this earlier, something with the configuration is not saving. So I'm piping the sound from the basically headphone jack on my laptop into my sound card's line in. So the line has to be on for the sound to show up. Otherwise, it won't do it. Even though I save it, it won't retain through reboot, unfortunately. So let's go to Dune 2 again. And we'll try Dune 2 one more time. And that should initialize. There we go, the MT32. Um, and I'm a little curious on this one, because a lot of other games, like Solid Duke Nukem uh, 3D and also Doom, is that you have two options. You have your sound effects card and then your music card. So it allows you to let the sound card handle... Um, excuse me, it lets you let the sound card handle the sound effects. There we go. Huzzah! We have MT32 enabled um, audio in Doom 2. Which is going to be probably far cry from uh, the normal sound effects. Now, Dune 2 to me is kind of screams... Um... Oh, okay, that's what I've heard, yeah. It's fetched memory! What? How much memory do you need? Jeez. We have 583, so... Largest executable program size, 569. I don't know how much more we can uh, load or not load. Uh... Using memory about one megabyte system, so we have extended memory. Extended memory is not available. At least 584k RAM needed, and I don't think we have that much available. Good grief. Uh, we will load it with extended memory then instead of um, expanded. So yeah, that's what I heard about the, the, the sound canvas. I'd really like to check it out, but the iPhone one is yeah dirt cheap by comparison. I know a lot of people use an iPhone then for this emulation component. You can do the same thing that I'm doing on a laptop, I just happen to have it. Um, and also an x86 processor I think handles it better from what I read. You can even do this on a Pi. But then to buy the actual PC version like Brad mentioned there, it's super expensive. And now they put it behind their cloud. So you gotta like sign up for the cloud to even be able to buy it. It's like, really? Uh, so let's do extended memory plus mouse then. And that should start up the XMS memory manager, I think. So what do we have now? 556, that's even less. So Yeah. I'm not loading something right here with this one. Uh that's fine. Um I'm just gonna try. I'm just gonna go to lowest without a memory. Because I, I'm really not gonna play this game. I just want to see what it sounds like, and I can mess with that later, but some games, it's very weird because you mess with expanded memory and extended memory, and it's just a mess. I think everyone who, again, had a computer in the 90s probably dealt with this, like, not enough memory, not enough memory, not enough memory. Uh, it was just a constant battle, because you feel like, I have so much memory, what's the problem? But it's a, a type of memory, the available type of memory. And I'm not sure if it has an extended memory manager installed or loaded. My guess is not, so we will go to expanded memory only. We're not even loading a mouse now. Um, which should... The problem is we're loading the Sound Blaster driver, um, which eats memory. 569, 583, so... Yeah, we don't have enough to execute it. Um, 
Let's see. Device high mem. EMM36. That is loading correctly, or should be. Basically, the memory manager we have is not able to produce enough memory, I'm guessing. But it also might be that uh, EMM36 is not found. So I saw an error there on the load. Uh, do, do, do. So yeah, you are having to load the Sound Blaster card, right? And that's that's part of the problem, is initializing the Sound Blaster. And that does eat up RAM. I mean, as simple as that. Uh, let's see if there's a Windows DOS start. So sure there's nothing. Oh my goodness. And that's loading that there too. And that's also loading this stuff, huh? Double loading the. What if we um. We could rem this out. Or we can just try a different game too. We'll try a different game. I'm not gonna fight forever with that one, but we I, I grabbed a whole bunch of different games. So there's a particular game you want to see from the early '90s, late '80s even. Uh, or, you know, mid-ish, whatever, that you might remember that had mini music. I can certainly grab it, too. I have a hard drive full of stuff. Um, and I did install a slew of games that I thought might be uh, fun to try, but we'll see if we run into memory problems over and over. I know that later games don't have that kind of issue. Uh, it's pretty fun to see it struggling. That's true, yeah, instead of the low load high or whatever. I thought the LH in AutoX or the Config Sys was the load high. That was the, uh, but I can check and see what is said on the other ones. Probably something's bad there in the command. So this is kind of like a hack job of the, um, so we have a device high. It is loading the CD in the high, but then I'm not sure if you can load the memory managers into high, if that's going to mess things up. But yeah, I mess with some of this uh, back and forth throughout my years, and it's always a fun thing to to go back to because some of the stuff is like, okay, that's easy, and some of the stuff is awful to figure out. Uh, but it does spin up the DOS start. I'm gonna rem that out. Try again. So the, the thing with this is that um, the the start stuff here that Phil from Phil's Computer Lab created, uh, it basically gives you a shortcut desk on your desktop from Windows 95 or Windows 98 even. And you run that and it basically just runs all the stuff for you um, to give you the menu options so you don't have to build all the stuff. And it's kind of a shortcut to get into a good loaded DOS uh, mode that doesn't give you too much problem. But it has room for tweaking, especially when you start installing drivers and who knows what. Bad commander file name. I'm curious what is loading there. So now it did not initialize the. Uh, oh, that's still loading tab. Um, it still did not initialize the uh, sound card, which is then happening in DOS start, clearly. F exit. Yes, so. Which is fine. I think this is the one. Windows CTCM is probably. So we're removing that. We're loading high device mouse and then the CD drive. All right, we'll reboot one more time. Um, we'll go back to normal. We'll find another game to try. But if you have specific requests, I grabbed a slew of games. Um, I said a lot of them are going to have memory stuff that you have to deal with. Um, especially earlier ones seem to have a lot more of that problem, but, you know, games like I have Indiana Jones here and Fate of Atlantis I haven't installed it. I have Descent installed. Descent 2, I should say. That didn't work just, just fine. Uh, a lot of those are a little older, and I shouldn't say older, they're newer. Um, and they might then not necessarily benefit from MT32. They'll sound okay, but they might be more designed for the sound canvas. More of a general MIDI thing, more than just the uh, MT32 specifically.
so we have boy memory just seems to be dropping uh let's see what else we have here i did try space quest 3 which i think probably has some setup here somewhere i couldn't quite get it to work um i think it froze up on me so but i probably have to configure the sound somehow but i didn't see quite how uh there's an install we'll do that only if you correctly specify the type of computer, yes. Uh, we have a EGA VGA with RGB monitor, sure. We have a Roland MT32 or MT100 sound module. I have never played it, so make sure it is connected. Make sure it's con uh, everything is good, okay. IBM compatible keyboard. Uh, no joystick. Yes, I'm gonna use a mouse. Well, not found, blah, blah, blah. <laughs> I don't think I like that. Uh, we can try the same thing again without doing... What was the... Oh. Uh, CD games, CDSQ3. I think you can do it without installing. So now it's basically someone just took probably the installation files and dropped them on here. So um, that was... I already forgot it. Install. All I'm trying to do is configure it. So, uh, IBM EJ with RGB monitor, Roland, uh, IBM compatible, no joystick, mouse. Uh, skip this step, press escape. Installation complete. So, I think I tried this and it didn't work. So, we'll see what happens this time. I think it just got to here and it never initialized, it never did anything. So I have a feeling the installation isn't working as expected. So right now I would expect the the um, device to start blinking that is connecting, but I'm not seeing anything, so. And it was not able to copy um, the files. I think I tried it yesterday and I did let it sit for probably like 10 minutes and never got anywhere. So I think it's basically frozen. <laughs> So the idea was good. We will reboot again. I just change my line in. Um, that's the hazard with doing a lot of this stuff here. But I know like Descent and some of the later 90s games work just fine. What I'm trying to do is get some of the older games to work. Because some of them, uh, I know this game called Heart of China. I never played that. I have that on here too. It's supposed to have really good MT32 support. But again, struggling a little bit with the memory uh, to get it going, I guess. so. And a lot of these were... Just say acquired from. I have a big pack of DOS games. It's not the Exodus collection or anything like that. So, um, which these settings work then for most of these, let's say later games, a Doom and onward. But a lot of other ones do not. So SB sixteen mixer set. Why won't you save that setting? You stupid thing. Save. Is there a config file here? Um, trying to look for if there's a config file. Maybe we can modify it in there instead. ctmix.cfg. All right, so line presets. Well, let's, I'll see what that says on the next one, but maybe it's, I don't know why it's resetting that every time it's kind of like, uh, so we'll go to games and we'll go to China. We'll try this one now. And I don't think there was an install. Change sound music, Roland. Okay. And that's pretty much it. So you need at least memory. No. See, a lot of these are just being annoying. But I think we had enough memory when we ran this one without CD support. So we'll try this again. Uh, and we'll try this one. And then we'll switch to some games that I know work. Um, but I said this will be a tinkering episode, so I haven't even checked how many people we have on stream, so apologize. We have a few viewers now, so again, if you're joining us late, we are um, connected with a uh, MIDI emulator on a laptop into our DOS gaming machine, so, and that's what we're messing with right now. Mildly successfully. Uh, a lot of these definitely require more messing around to get everything to work. Not gonna lie there. 
What do we have now? There we go. So that should be enough for Heart of China. So CD SB 16. So was it mixer? CT mix.cfg. Why? Uh, so line is 200, 250. So. Yep, line is down to nothing. Oh, that makes no sense at all. The idea is that you should mute inputs, special inputs that you're not using, which is sound, but then um, the fact that it keeps just bombing out like that is annoying. What's the HOC? I see some MIDI or MT32 stuff going on. It is blinking, which means it's receiving instructions. There we go. So yeah, this is, again, MT32 enhanced sound, then. Should be. Sounds like a horror movie now. <laughs> I don't think this is running as expected on this guy. Wow, that's hilarious. It's supposed to be, like, nice, soothing music, but uh, right now it sure sounds like uh, horror music. I don't know anything about this game, but ECR music off, music on. I hear any music? Say, uh, I'm not gonna turn it up too much, but unless this is like a horror movie. So this is what happens again when it's sending instruction set and it's not received correctly, then it just goes haywire, right? So there we go. We're using general MIDI here now. I shouldn't say general MIDI, but it it's using probably more what you're expecting to be normal sound. Great. I don't know nothing about this game. I assume it's a uh, adventure game, point and click kind of thing. See if we can launch that again and try one more time and see what it sounds like. Because yeah, clearly the emulation of the MT32 there did not work as expected. So again, there's some drawbacks of doing it emulated, right? So probably sounds better, but yeah. Or it might be the game sending it incorrectly too, or something you can figure with the sound card, but... Sound. We'll try another game. <laughs> One that I definitely know works is Descent. Uh, I've had Descent 2 on here. I think I already configured the sound. Uh, can I find a CD-ROM drive? Whoops, I need that. I gotta load again with the CD-ROM drive. This thing, I remember seeing Heart of China being used a lot for demoing, but I certainly don't, uh, haven't seen anyone really playing it. So we'll load the MT32 again here. And also, some games use, I think, what's called an extended um, configuration, too, where some games took advantage of additional sound channels, if you will. And uh, if your ROM for the MT32 does not support that, then you'll probably get some bad stuff, which is probably what we saw. But again, I have a lot of stuff to configure still, but I was excited because I got this working yesterday, so I wanted to mess with it some more. All right, we'll go into CDs in here and do Mixer Set again. Well, this is thing reboots pretty quickly. Uh, so a reminder, this guy has a um, SD card adapter for a hard drive, so it's pretty quick. So if we go to CD Descent 2, Setup. So this game uses Redbook Audio, which sounds awesome, but we don't want that. We want... I'm 
and I got louder there, of course, right away. So... <laughs> Kath has entered the room. So, um... We can change this to... Uh, a sound master we can see directly here now if it lets us. Well, it's doing the same thing where it's frozen up there. That's really weird, but I'll mess with it later. We'll go to sound master 16. Oops, that's the uh, digital. Let's see, digital sound card should be AW32 to 251. Um, Change the music card, we can go to Sound Master Pro 16. So the AW32 uses an extended um, instruction set versus the Sound Master 16 is the OPL one that you're probably most familiar with, so. That's really bizarre that the MIDI thing keeps breaking. I'm not sure why the um, folder for the uh, uh, sound card keeps going bonkers. I bet if we go back in and I'm curious. So this will be a tinkering episode. So there's no CD MIDI again there. So this whole directory must be being reset. It's really weird. So I assume that's as part of the DOS loading. It's copying this from somewhere else then. Uh, so CT MIDI dash A dot DRV to CT MIDI dot DRV. Oh, that already exists. Nope. That is there. Mixer set. MIDI is on. CD game, CD descent two, setup. Of course, we're not trying to mess with the, you know, the old one, but curious to see why it's not working at all. That's really bizarre. You can do Redbook audio as well, which is CD audio, but it kind of loses some of the luster there to do that. I'm not sure if I put that disc in. It is in. So yeah, something is wonky with the... It's definitely worked out today. But anyway, we're not here to, to mess with that. We are going to mess with General MIDI. So, in this case here, we have the MT32. But if we then switch to using... Probably one that's more suitable for this, which would be the Yamaha one. Start that guy. Yeah, that was an error. That is a lot of configuration stuff to, to get this working properly. I'm just scratching the surface, but it's a, a lot cheaper. So. so this sounds a little more deep and perhaps richer that you're expecting from this generation of game. That's actually really good. So it basically goes like the MT32 is run for earlier DOS games. It's really good actually. And then you go to the later games or mid 90s games, you're looking more at an SC55 where in this case is Yamaha synthesizer. And in this case, the Yamaha sounds really good. So we will um, try the game real quick that way. Send to. And again, the audio is just super fun to mess with, and I apologize again, because getting levels right between all these different devices now is like freaking brutal. These are all videos, so it's not initializing yet. You can see on the screen now how the Yamaha was initialized. And I can actually, in real time here, if I stop this, and it goes just kind of the, almost the, the general device playback here on the MIDI itself. And it doesn't sound bad either. But then you engage the Yamaha. Now I will say, it gets all messed up when you're switching back and forth like this, because it seems to me, and again, someone knows MIDI better than I do, correct me, but I think it basically preloads the information and sends it in a batch first, and then it sends the notes. 
So I think that's what you're seeing in a lot of these, so... You can see, again, no, no activity from the MIDI generator. It's all... Um, it's just a video at this point, so... Prepare for Descent. Again, still video. Now the game launches, then initialize the MIDI. There you see. But it's, it's weird, because it's like a lot of these games, it, it kind of bridges a gap between what I consider like classic DOS game sounds, which is definitely more the OPL 3 that you're used to, um, before CD Audio came in, and they just put everything on CD Audio, uh, and it didn't really, you know, matter what you had for sound generation at that point, it just played synthesized um, samples. But this is still dependent on the device you're using, so you kind of get more character with the music, it's weird to describe, but I feel uh, there was... Uh, more character in the music base at this point, so... Hey, Ozzy, no problem. I keep calling you Ozzy, it's just natural, but it's Modius. Uh, welcome. We are uh, messing around with MIDI devices. Uh, in this case here, it is the MIDI interface on a laptop that's now playing Descent 2 for us via a Yamaha synthesizer plugin, which is what you're seeing dancing in the small screen there. And we have an MT32 plugin as well that we're having like mixed success with because a lot of the MT32 games don't want to run on this computer because of memory problems, so. But, you know, once you start playing it, it plays exactly like you expect. Normal descent, but you get the benefit of that extra sound oomph, if you will. I'm going to make sure that the sound isn't too loud there. Door open. This is where my excellent depth perception comes into play. Because now I get all into playing this game, but... It's funny how much muscle memory is on this game for me. What? Open the door! And you can hear it, but then if we uh, stop the... Because the idea is, that, you know, it doesn't call... I mean, it just sounds better in general. For these generation of games, like the... You know, it feels like 93 and onward. I love everything about the Descent games as far as concept goes, but they are difficult to play, no doubt. And then when they're trying to make it like even harder with even more like smart moves from these robots and everything, that's real tricky. Boy, there's a lot of enemies here for being on rookie difficulty. A laser upgrade? Laser boosted to two. There we go. Pink laser. Take that. Okay. Another general made device called Korg. Okay. I have to look into because as I said, I just barely scratched the surface. And like I was talking earlier, like, you know, the sound can change dramatically depending on the plugin you're using. Um, and that's what's really cool with this is that it gives you so many options to tinker around with it. So. Because now if we switch to the MT32, I don't think it's going to sound super good. We'll try it. But this sounds really good, actually, with the general. Uh, let's go to the Munts. And it probably froze up. Oh, it loaded the intro. Interesting. Yeah, it's very quiet now, of course, but... It sounds more, again, has that earlier 90s. Um, <laughs> it's very um, reminiscent of early 90s to me, like TIE Fighter, which I have on here. We can try that. That is a very MT32 sounding game to me. Um, but then you get those later ones, like Descent and, and Doom and, and whatnot. And goodness, the um, it goes really quickly to the demo. 
case here, the normal like uh, default plugin I have in here seems to be sounding the best on this guy. So um, he might be sleeping. I haven't seen Ted, so but welcome everyone else for sure. I'm glad we have a little crowd here. So that's loud, probably. But it sounds really cool. It's like a you know driving bass. My goodness, we're here for descent. Then we'll play that. Alright, we'll exit out of this now. Going really fast to the next stage there. So that's Descent 2. Uh, I gotta remember what else I put on here. I would like to get Descent 1 as well, which I do have. I do have Monkey Island, which I was really trying to get working. Um, which to me, that is a quintessential uh, MT32 uh, one. But I could not get that to um, work. Let's see. These are discs, so run me... So there's like nothing in here. There's just LEC files. Uh, run me just does this. Interpreter based games. Game took a little time to figure out. I'm pretty sure now when I do this, it's just going to break. So, yeah. That's all it did. So now I have glorified, like, yeah. So what I'm going to do, oh, let's see. Games. Uh, dear, I can't remember what else I put on here. Uh, Duke 3D Transport Icoon, I think, supports that as well. We can try that. Um, and then Dune 1 as well. But then TIE Fighter is pretty classic. Um, TT. <laughs> Whee! That's. Is there a setup for this? Nope. Alright, we're going to have to reboot. Oh wow, and even hard froze. Boy, I did not like that. So some of these games like really break, and the problem is that, you know, my copy might not be the cleanest. We're gonna hard reset it. And I would switch to another computer to do this stuff too. Uh, however, the wiring mess behind all these streaming rigs is brutal. So crawling back down under there uh, to plug in even this was an adventure in itself. So that's nothing I can switch on the fly. We will try, probably before the night is over, um, switching to the Mister to do the same thing, because the Mister can do actually the same thing. Uh, however, it does it through um, IP-based emulation. It sends it to the software through a loopback, um, and then you can uh, run it that way, which I think is, is a really cool way to do it. So let's check out, uh, of course, we go back to SB16, mixer set, and do this. Set, I'm going to mess around with trying to figure out, because I think I'm just a little fuzzy on exactly how it's launching all this stuff. I think it's a DOS start. So the way I think it does is when you have this thing where you are DOS starting from Windows 95, it's basically launching in a, you know, could it encapsulated configuration. So now when you're done with DOS, you exit and it goes back to Windows 95. Well, that's convenient, but it also means that it's not... It's not a persistent configuration, if that makes sense. So, uh, we did have Transport Icoon. So we have setup. There we go. We'll launch that. There we go. All right. So, sound effects, which is 16. Uh, we don't have A32, 225, 1. We have then uh, Roland LPC 1 MT32. Uh, we can also just do this for general MIDI, but let's try it. Tycoon. I see some stuff going on. Yep, there we go. Quiet. Sound quite good. So this is more of an example of you know, MT32 music, and this game has a phenomenal uh, midi bass soundtrack, I'm not going to lie, I play this a lot. Um, so that's the one I think we tried a few weeks ago, or a couple months ago now, where uh, I was playing the deluxe version, which this apparently is, so I was trying to use my original floppies and they were dead, unfortunately, because they were very mistreated, but this... Uh, 
it's just really good music. But we can look here if we go, I did do this, you can see blown up here, but you can see uh, all the different instruments triggering basically as it's doing this. So on the one hand, the MIDI player that's playing is basically just a MIDI handler. So it can answer, but in this case we're telling it to bypass and send information to the plugin, which then the month beat VSTI, which is what emulates the MT32. So each one is a plugin. So uh, no, uh, Brad, you mentioned the Korg. Uh, I'd definitely look into that because I'm curious because all these things change the sound dramatically how, how how the game sounds. So if we stop this now. It sounds really good too, but it's using basically the built-in bass. I think it's a, they call it bass player or something like that. Which sounds extremely rich now, because now it sounds more like an SD55 or a later uh, one. Um, and again, you can change how this sounds dramatically with sound fonts as well. Uh, and I started messing with that, and sound fonts again is just like, what does an instrument sound like? And uh, the thing I have installed now, I think is... Um, let's see, there's so many settings in these things. Yeah, I think I see the Arachno sound font, that's right. We can do the... See yeah, how it changed sound there? Um, I've heard very good things about the Arachno one, which is why I installed that particular sound font. But again, it just contains the instruction set on what does each musical instrument sound like. And again, it changes dramatically. So now if we load up the Yamaha one again... I guess we have an OPL one. Let's try that one. I think the OPL then emulates the OPL. Yeah, this is what the game now sounds like. Because now what it's doing, it's... So on a normal Soundmaster sound card, you would basically have the OPL on the chip, right? Which we can do. But now what we're doing is we're doing the exact same thing, except offloading. So now we're running OPL3 on this computer and sending it back to the sound card. Uh, which, of course, bypasses that, but it lets you have OPL um, um, sound without having the OPL chipset, which, I mean, I think pretty much all the Soundmaster cards have the OPL 3, probably. And I know a lot of other ones may be trying to emulate it in software, which may not sound as good. I mean, this sounds good enough that you can actually straight up listen to it. Well, let's switch back to the other sound font again. You can get some really cool sound fonts. That's got a good mixture of this one, I think, so. Um, so. Let's quit to DOS on this guy. I don't want to actually play the game. Psh, forget that. Um, so, uh, yes, I'm planning on making a video on this one. Um, it's, again, something I just learned how to do, so it will probably not be a super deep dive, but I can at least go to steps like, you know, one, two, three on what I did. What I can show you as well, I showed the team earlier here, if you, um, yeah, I know, I'm casting. So what I'm doing is actually I'm casting through NDI, what NDI is a network device interface, something weird protocol that actually sends uh, a screen data. It can be a phone. It can be a laptop or computer. It sends whatever you want. And I have a, a region of interest screen I can move around now on my surface here. And it's broadcasting that to OBS over network wirelessly. And it's pretty quick too. But here's the general setup what I have physically. And some of you probably saw this when we started, right? But uh, if you were late, I'll just give a real quick refresher. But so what we're doing is that we're doing MIDI out. And most sound cards that have a game port can handle MIDI out. So it's literally a game port to MIDI cable. And the MIDI cable looks um, kind of like a large PS2 in that sense. So this is standard for, for musical instruments and musical composing, right? So it's just a by effect of using the standard. And the idea being you hook up a keyboard, you send the information from the sound card to the keyboard and you can play it and vice versa. You can record using that and it's sending the, the notes to play, not the music itself, just the notes to play. Um, so we have that, that then goes to one of the couplers, which then goes into the little uh, USB MIDI interface um, that I have sitting next to the laptop here. Um, and I'll switch to that camera too, so you can see it. 
But this guy here is the MIDI interface cable, and that's what actually is handling the translation. Um, and that goes into the computer, which then has a MIDI port to listen, because that's what the MIDI interface does, and it listens for that file. Um, and then that processes it, and what I do then is I send the audio out from just a headphone jack on the laptop, which then goes to the line end of the computer. And then the computer mixes that together. You could have those two separate channels, so if you do nothing, it will literally play that MIDI music on your laptop or whatever. So switch back to here somewhere. Where was the player? There we go. Yes, uh, it can, and it can actually do that through software. So you can actually do this directly. You do not have to have hardware to do this. Um, you can do what's called MIDI loopback address, and there's plenty of guides to this, and actually there's some built-in stuff in DOSBox, I believe, for this even. I haven't actually tried it yet, but yes, you can do all this emulation 100%, basically. You could emulate this, you can emulate DOS game and everything, so... Um, and I wouldn't, just to put a record straight, I would definitely not mind a physical, you know, SC55 or an SC88 or something like that, but the problem is that they are ludicrously expensive, and they keep going up in price. Um, it's just... It's just so expensive to, to do those games, or games, those devices. Oops. Let's go to Gods. That is a game that uses the MT32 quite well, I believe. So let's switch to that. Um, month. Start that. So this is the month thing running again. Uh, this is probably a so we each actually have a specific one for each one here so we will do a install display sound is Roland and we'll try it I guess And we'll do see. Um, I know I'm going to the same directory now. Gods one. Um, so where is the actual? Okay. So... Huh. All right. Did it actually? Nope, it didn't. So let's try it again because <laughs> it didn't actually install it. Uh, C games gods. There we go. Save config. So then we'll try roll. Nope, that didn't do anything. So we'll do gods then. Probably initializes it. We'll see. Initializing Roland. Come on. Doing anything? No. Sure doesn't sound like it. Pretty sure this should be uh, blasting tunes right now. Yeah. Exit to DOS. And to be... No? Space? To be clear, to... Um... Yeah, should be Roland. Did I reboot this thing? Yeah, didn't I? Did I go in here? Oh, I did change it, so. Games, CD Gods. Uh, yeah, the Falco. It's supposed to initialize there, but it's not doing anything. So this is the Falco Soft MIDI player. Let me find the uh, link for it, because. Um, You'll find it under there, so you can do the sound font MIDI player, basically. Um, without a sound font or with... I did a ba base MIDI with sound font edition, because that comes with everything pre-configured, so... Yeah, should try Wing Commander. Uh, I can probably get it installed here as well. 
The problem with Wing Commander, depending on the version of Wing Commander you're playing, is that it's very speed sensitive. And we'll probably have to go and disable all the cache on this machine. Um, specific RQ7, is that all it does? Like it won't... Uh, I guess that there was no configuration change there, was there? Like you couldn't set it. Can I do... Oh, that's awful. <laughs> Down, left, right, fire, space. There's a lot of uh, files here. Edit read.me. Does it say anything? Um, oh, cool to get the rolling working. It's weird. Some of the version of the title music will not be heard when running the game from three and a half inch low density floppy disk. Well, we're not doing that. The bubble also applies a role in soundboard support. Well, maybe it's not playing the. Uh, let's try the. Get further into the. Because I said that it doesn't play. It might be thinking that it's running from. Ah, what's the button to... Good game. <laughs> um, I swear I didn't install it. Um, HD install. Let's try that. I kept all the configuration, but I'm still not seeing it initializing, so I could try RQ7, but then I have to change the configuration and all that because I can what a mess. So maybe we'll uh, try another game. Uh, this thing, I think a lot of these games should work just fine, but then clearly uh, they are not always, so. I think got EGA. Let's try to initialize it, but then sound blasts are not working either, which clearly we had a problem with before, so... Uh, that's the really weird part. Uh, what other games did I put on here now that I don't remember? I said it would be really fun to get Monkey Island to work, but there's like no configuration at all here. Um, I have a feeling it's because of the version. It looks like it's kind of like a cracked, compiled version. And I actually have uh, Monkey Island in a collector. Uh, called Classic Adventures, but it is, um, so the Classic Adventures box copy includes Monk Island, Indy, and the Last Crusade, Maniac Mansion, Zack McCracken, and Loom, but they're all on five and a quarter, um, which we find. I have five and a quarter floppy drives, but I don't have one installed into this little retro network right now, so I need to take care of that. Um, so I do have the game, but I just can't play it right now, so... We will switch to a different game. Uh, let's see, we can try TIE Fighter. I bet that's going to sound pretty good if we're in the month here. Uh, so, is there a test MIDI, test blah, blah, blah. We have detect. Um, MU set, maybe? I'll try install. I don't have my memory available. Jeez. <laughs> Set soundboard. Custom. So, yeah. <laughs> Let's see. Do we have a rolling specific? Yeah, there's a rolling specific one. There we go. Now that's MP32 mode. You actually see the display lighting up here. So this is a specific roll in one. Um, 
and that's what you would see on that little display on the uh, MT32 as well. Uh, is what you're seeing there. So that clearly is working very well. Unfortunately, we won't be able to uh, run the game, I guess, because of memory. 560k required. So we will um, reboot again and remove some stuff. I think we should be able to run it without. I have a, well, I don't have a joystick plug. I think I plugged it in, but I'm not sure if it actually works or not. Uh, I will mention that I've said it before too, but when I played Tie Fighter originally, I played it at a friend's house, um, and he did not have a joystick. He only had a trackball, so we would play Tie Fighter with a trackball and spin the wheel like crazy to try and catch up. And by goodness, we beat the whole game with a trackball. Uh, I don't know why we did, but we did. So, so we'll do expanded memory plus mouse and no CD-ROM, stable memory. And I think that the um, you know AW64 is a later sound card, right? It's still a nice card, but it's using a lot of memory probably to boot up. So if you're going to run a, a core like DOS with to play some of the older stuff, you probably can uh, get away with less stuff. Um, so let's see, still turn to load a CD on drive, but we have memory now. That should be enough. Go to SP16, mixer set. The game, so you tie. Oop, install, we'll check that again. What well, should I have memory now? 560k required, 582 recommended. Pfft. Check that it's still working. Nope, and tie. Came around again. This is a legendary game. I play this so much. Probably play through it again at some point. Maybe with a joystick this time. triggering but I'm not really getting any volume it's doing the same thing as I did before where it's just uh oh, there we go it's a little bit of music was really quiet Yeah, something's not right there with the instruction set. I'm guessing it doesn't like the like roll in specific one. Um, super quiet. All right, there we go. Uh, I'm gonna go back to let's see options, yeah. Cause yeah, I clearly didn't like that. So we will go to the uh, the just general MIDI out then. Custom. That's loud. <laughs> Never ends. Turn that down, try again. There we go. So yeah, there's, you know, obviously with this tinkering level, there's a lot of stuff to, to figure out, no doubt. But in theory, then once you get things figured out, you don't have to mess with it anymore, right? So. So I think I'm going to replace the uh, video card in this. It's just got a standard S3 Verge something. Huh, that's weird, it's doing the same thing again. <laughs> yeah, I got to look at C with the MT32 plug in. I think it's just having problems. But instead, we get this like dramatic piano rendition here with the standard synthesizer. <laughs> um, what are these? 
these. I don't think these are the... No, that is not a file. I was messing around. Yeah, it does not have a loaded ROM. Okay, I see. Messing around and yeah, in theory, that's always the kicker. Um There you go, now sounds I have a feeling something was messed up with the settings there, but this is what the MT32 thing should sound like, I think, but... Yeah, that's the thing, it's like, the later version, the CD-ROM version, is the collector, the, um, the one that bundles all together. Gets rid of the MIDI sound, and it's all just, um, use the CD-ROM music. Admiral Thrawn. Oh yeah, I ate this game up. Well, let's try, I want to uh, exit one more time, and I'm going to try and do the MT32 mode again. Because I am wondering if I have something messed up in the configuration there, because it was saving config when uh, exiting, so... So let's try uh, the MT32 mode again. Custom. Roland. Uh, and no. Let's try a TIE Fighter one more time. See if it does the same note thing here. at the dancing nope it doesn't like sending that instruction set I'm guessing that yeah because the huh, it's like it had to be reset or something I'm guessing that has something to do with the like the MT32 specific setup or something that it doesn't like it yeah yeah, so the interesting thing I just read about the uh, Warcraft 2, it actually uses the music composed on one of these devices and then high quality sampled. Uh, might have been the SC55 or something like that, but one of the rolling devices is the basis for the CD music on that one. Um, and they record it so that, you know, you can just listen to it through Redbook with CD audio without having to have, um, you know, that high quality stuff. Yeah, it looks like it froze on the, um, so I disabled the month one and re-enabled it. Now it's using basically MP32 mode again. Because this sounds more, you know, appropriate, but then again, if I stop this... You get the general one, which of course is a grand piano now. We'll see some, some gunshots here. This game. Striking back at the rebel insurgents. Yeah, sticking with the because I mentioned earlier again, right? It has to like I think it loads in segments, and that's when it pulls the instrumentation. Signal by Admiral Thrawn to launch his tie squadrons immediately. But this one is definitely made for. This rebel stronghold has no hope of escape. Commence the attack. Yes, sir. Um, it, it's hard to describe the, the sound of it, right? Because it, as they got better and more advanced, they tried to really go hard with using realistic sounding sound, if that makes sense. And it loses a little bit of the, the character feel to it. Like, if you can, and that's something that's come around a lot with Mister, actually. If you could patch in the CD or improved audio on an old game, would you do it? I mean, sometimes it sounds okay, but, you know, you don't listen to the Mario tune, it's the Mario tune, and it's the thing that goes with the game. So, 
That's why I feel like this kind of like muted sound effect that, or music that you're expecting for this is what you want, so. Pew, 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 pew. Oh, it was so cool, the fact you uh, flew for the Empire in this one. That's fine, I never uh, played this with a, I don't think I played this with a joystick or whatever, so... Sure. <laughs> Enter your name, pilot. I love the um, animations. Oh, it's, oh, so cool. Combat chamber, tech room, film room. Since there was nothing else that you could like get into on the Empire side. In the simulator. Whoa, hi. Uh, power. Or 100% power, I think, already. Yeah, it's coming back to me now, here. Take that, you cone scum. Yeah, this joystick, I think, needs to be taken apart and kind of uh, retightened because it's got a very big floppy dead zone in the middle. Uh, but I actually found this. It's a. I can't remember what it's called now, Wee Man Extreme. It's a joystick I had as a kid, and I happened to find it thrifting with the box um, a year or so ago. But a game like this, you pretty much need uh, running out of juice. So uh, the big thing with this game is you have to, like, balance the power management and everything. Oh, we need maximum... I, I, on, on. This is at the very low settings. Uh, there we go. Look at that high level graphics. Play this on a forty-six, sixty-six, or fifty uh, in my friend's house, and certainly could not run with the full settings at that point. But this is a tension machine. Even that is struggling with the backgrounds. I think. How do I exit out of this thing? Uh, the thing with these games is like, which is the exit? I have to reboot to get out of this game. Yeah, I think it froze up. Yeah, 30-ish. I mean, it was... It was 60 there for a while. But yeah, I think the game froze up, so... Uh, what we're going to do now is we're going to go into Windows 95 and copy some more games, I think. Um, if you guys have specific things you want to track. I do want to copy the Zen, the first one. Uh, if you have other ones, let me know and I can grab them, too. I do have Indiana Jones and the Fate of Atlantis here as well, but... Um, see, I'm not sure how late we are on the stream, because I would like to show the, um, the mister doing this, which is a little trickier to get going. Well, not really trickier per se. Uh, we're going to restart on Windows 95. Uh, it's not super complicated, but repeatability is the thing, because I did get it all going. Um... And um, then I didn't really think of how, how I got to that point, so. Just <laughs> waiting for Windows 95 to start up. Just waiting, waiting. There we go. Uh, I am going to assume... This will be very loud. I'm going to turn it down right now because I know Windows 95 can be much, much louder. Yep. Just this endless fight on the... Um, pretty early still then. This endless fight with the audio and whatnot. Uh, put this joystick away somewhere. There we go. Until a cat walks on it. 
Um, so I thought I copied, uh, let's see. So this machine is, uh, or this, this is a NAS basically. So, so yeah, I did copy the send. So I'm going to grab that. Uh, games, auto range. Games, uh, why am I blind? Range by name. There we go. Games. Copying descent. Uh, let's see, what else do we have on here? I did grab a whole bunch, but I have a, a lot of these here are not DOS games or uh, they're more Windows 95, Windows 8 games. So. Did grab Star Control 2. I'm not sure if I installed Yeah, I did copy that. I'm not sure if that had MIDI or not, but we can check that out. I know that's one of Brian's favorites, so. Um, now I'm in the Midwest, so I'm in Central Time Zone. So it is uh, 10.30 here now. So let's see, we have... So what I do have is basically um, this very large... Oh, we have Warcraft 2 Battle Edition. This is the CD install version, I think, yeah. Which is the Battle Edition, the later one then. So... Um, what I have here is a folder that has a lot of old DOS games. So if you guys have specific suggestions, uh, I can certainly check that out. Uh, probably all the Police Quest and Space Quest games would be good if I could get them to work. Um, well, I know Police Quest probably has... don't think... Okay, so here's what I have to do. Uh, I have to cheat a little bit and then go to... I don't have a... Well, actually, I think 7-Zip is actually supported on here. So... I tried to think ahead, and I put a lot of stuff on, um, let's see, this is probably under tools, yeah, 7 zip. I tried to put a lot of stuff on here that um, would be useful on these retro machines, so I could just like plug in, and, and once I get network connected, I can copy everything I need, that's where I keep everything. So now I have 7 zip on here, so I can actually unzip files. Um, so we probably have... Police Quest. I don't know any, any of them, but I think that Sierra was really good about supporting um, that kind of stuff. So maybe we'll try. There, we're using a Windows 95 machine, a P1166 to 7-zip decompress folders from a network drive. So where the heck did that go? That was Police Quest, right? And not... Did the uh, folder name get too long? PQ2. Maybe they didn't like it. Uh, I have not played Police Quest 2. I'm just going to try and see if it works with the audio, really. So 7-zip extract here. Just as I said that, it's like, yeah, look at that. We're doing all kinds of cool stuff. Ah, never mind. <laughs> So a uh, build video, uh, I can, what I'm hoping to do, well, that's not even, okay. Never mind then on the, uh, can I copy it here and extract it then? Like it's doing it, but then not actually dumping it there. There we go. Um, so what I'm planning on now is that I actually uh, took the day off tomorrow because I'm going to just work on trying to get my next video out. I'm just sick of having it hanging out, so I'm going to get that video done. Um, and um, I haven't really done any live build videos, and I'm trying to figure out how to do that with the setup and video and everything is a little trickier. I might figure out some way to do it. It's just a matter of space and everything. I'm very rigged now for this kind of streaming setup. But then streaming a... Um, a build is a different story. I'm planning on making a build video uh, after the one I do, hopefully getting out this weekend here, um, which will probably be a uh, AMD build of some variety. Uh, oh, I see it extracted it here. Gotcha. That would explain that. But we will delete those off the NAS. It couldn't do the folder. There we go. So, uh, if people have other ideas on old DOS games, I'm trying to think of other ones that might have good uh, early 
MT32 stuff. Because there's a lot of them here. I said I really wanted to try Monkey Island, but I'm not sure why it's not. <laughs> yeah, head mounted. I can just grab the uh, Logitech cam, smack it on my forehead, I guess, or glue it on there. Um, so Zach McCracken. I'd really like to find a version of Monkey Island that works, and maybe. Monkey Island. Uh, Secret of Monkey Island, isn't it? Maybe I copied the wrong version. Maybe there's two. Secret of Monkey Island. Well, Settlers 1 as well um, is apparently one that is good, so we can grab that one too. Copy here. Uh, Cap Mountain. <laughs> you would just run off with the camera, probably. Secret of Monkey Island. So that's the only version I have there, unfortunately. So it's too bad because uh, it would be cool to test that one. Maybe we'll just try those other two games here now. Um, extract to here. And rename to a DOS friendly name. So you can do this sort of networking with DOS, absolutely. Uh, but this is a lot quicker. I mean, the, the interface. So we have. Let's try to have SP. Oh, SC. That's Star Control. Okay. So let's go back into DOS. Um, and. Ta da! Try that again. Of course, I've already forgotten the games I installed, so you know, we'll see what happens. But we'll try a couple here, and then we're going to switch to the Mister and give that a whirl too before we call it. So, because that one feel tricker to get going. Um, I was actually surprised how easy it was to get this working with um, um, the emulation and connection. Just uh, I realized that digging through. Um, some boxes. Um, I'm sure just old stuff we had. I don't think I need to CD for any of these. We'll save the memory. Um, that I had the MIDI link cable, and that was the one that would be, I wouldn't say expensive, but you know, the more expensive part of this. And then I also had the uh, cable out for the sound card, which again, super handy. And then all I needed was really a two pack of couplers, and I was good to go. So. <laughs> Now, of course, having a retro computer to begin with, but again, you can do this all emulated. You can do this in DOSBox, and you can use the same emulator and everything. Um, and I think that's a really cool option to be able to experience these games. This emulation has gotten really good. I mean, hardware emulation, I love the Mister and all that stuff, and I love original hardware, but just flat-out software emulation, boy, they've really... It just keeps getting better and better every year, so... Uh, mixer set. I swear, I'll figure it out this one of these days. Where that's coming from. Uh, we'll check that again because I'm not sure if I got it. Yep, I got it. So, CD games. Uh, here you go, Brian. Let's see. I think this is the Star Control 2. Is there a setup? Starcon 2, that's all this. Uh, is there a batch? Nope. How do you configure the sound? Do you do that when you, set it, when you start it? Um, because there's melee, I know that one. Save games. Let's run it, I guess, see what happens. See me, that's the XE. Set up the P P P PKG. Nope. Uh, I think it was StarCon. Already forgot. StarCon 2. Not Ram Man a little. <laughs> Boy, yeah, I need to clean up and make it like a. a what well, I'm not gonna do it tonight because it'll take too long. But I need to go through and like figure out what's the best way to create. You can do new start start entries for the stuff that is just like baseline and no extra junk. That just a memory because clearly that's a problem here. I need memory extension and stuff like that. So we have what it says 569 available. 583 available. There 569. 566. That's what we have. Uh, probably is the type of RAM, I'm guessing. So I'll have to tweak that and figure it out. So sorry, Brian, not tonight. Wah, wah, wah. PQ2. Yeah, that's the thing. Is that, especially when you're running in emulators, you don't have to mess with nearly as much stuff, right? So, uh, alright. So we are going to do EGA. 
VGA with RGB monitor. So let's try to roll an MT32 sound module again, see if it loads. Clearly that wasn't working so great last time, but this was on Space Quest. We'll try this again. I have a feeling it's going to just crash again. But since you can't do general MIDI in this one. Uh, compatible joystick? Nope. I do want to use a mouse. Um, escape. Setup is complete. So what's the... Sierra... Well, that's right. Uh, a lot of these uh, older Sierra games, I just had a Sierra executable to run the game. But I have a feeling it's going to go to the exactly same spot, yeah. I think it's failing to initialize the MT32 module, I'm guessing. And the question is that maybe some of these uh, acquired copies um, stripped out components needed for this to save space or whatnot. But it's not doing anything, obviously, so... I'm trying to see if there's a shortcut to exit, but it does not appear to be so. I am hacking. So... That's a bust then, so yeah, I need to uh, keep tweaking this, but it was part of like... Literally got this working yesterday, so that's why you're seeing the raw end of just like, hey, this works, oh, it never mind, it doesn't work. But you see the potential of what you can do, uh, and it's a lot of really cool stuff. Maybe we'll try and do the month instead here, and see if that works better. A close out of this. I do have month. Configure... We're going to do a new MIDI port named Yamaha. So this thing is basically a MT32 emulator only. So let's give this a shot here now. Um, first off, let's just try it on something that we know is supposed to work. Let's try TIE Fighter again. So uh, first, how much? 16? SP16. And it might be that I have the MIDI program misconfigured. So yeah, again, I think... Um, Brad, you mentioned this earlier, but this is month specifically then. So this is the month MP32 emulator as opposed to the other one, which is the MIDI handler, if that makes sense. It's a MIDI hook-in. Line-in is gone, so... But this one we know should work. Game CD tie. Uh, was it set up? No, it was install. And we'll set soundboard, custom, Roland. lighting up like crazy. The little green panel you see in the top right corner there, uh, I can go to full screen so you can see it here, but it's basically what you'd see on the display on the actor Roland. You see, that's what you'd see, so this gives you more of a true experience uh, of what the Roland thing would be. So, um, let's try a TIE Fighter again here and see if it plays nice this time with the note. this worked, but then it got a hanging note issue there earlier. Here's to see now. Yeah, it works fine. So I'm guessing uh, I have something misconfigured, obviously, in the MIDI software. So this is also available free. This is the uh, Munt emulator. I'm not sure if you can hear it, but it does work just fine right now. Now, I swear, uh, especially if you watch YouTube, Half the reason people buy the MT32 or any of these sound canvas devices is so they can just have a YouTube video shot slowly panning on the little display panel going off. Which, granted, is cool, but goodness, that, uh... Ah, I gotta set a joystick. Can I exit? No. The first joystick I had of this guy, uh, I basically snapped trying to calibrate it. That was the story, but true. Uh, the... See if I can get a shot here, but there we go. This is the Logitech Extreme Wingman Extreme, uh, and it's a plastic cylinder. It's the center support. And when I was a kid, I was trying to calibrate it so hard that I literally just snapped it. That was not a indication of my strength. That was just you know poor design, basically. So anyway, so now uh, let's see what else we can try with this MT32. Then, so let's go back to here, so you can see that. Um, so let's, what else, uh, we can try the Space Quest 3 again. 
Maybe it likes it better. Uh, base cost four. Nah. But clearly the outer emulation stuff is working great um, in the mid emulator, but then MT32 here specifically. It's on this one. So we'll do uh, try one or two more games, and then we will uh, try the Mister quick if we have time or energy. <laughs> what I can do is I can boot up the Mister. It's a little complicated to get that one to. And having trouble with playing that on a CRT. So this is of course an original computer. So it's playing on a CRT right now, and I'm capturing with uh, going through a bunch of converters and junk, and. Um, the mister is a little trickier because the, it outputs supposed to output the original uh, video in the native format, and it's not having a good time with that on DOS resolutions. They haven't built that in yet, so you basically have to double scale it, kind of like the Amiga is like a 15 kilohertz signal, but then you put in a scan liner that doubles it to 30 kilohertz, so you can actually play it on a normal computer monitor. You pretty much have to force that in there to make it work or view viewable. That's only on the VGA side. On the HDMI side, on the Mister, it works flawlessly. You can capture it. It looks pixel perfect and all that good stuff. Um, but to get it on a CRT is surprisingly difficult so far, which is weird because playing the Mister on this kind of stuff works great. But they haven't gotten to that yet. And there's no dig on the Mister project because they do amazing things. Uh, but they just haven't gotten to that, that yet. Or I'm not sure when they will. Uh, ideally, you'd be outputting that same 70 whatever kilohertz signal. Right now, it's 69.8 uh, hertz uh, vertical refresh rate and 31.3 kilohertz in DOS here. And they do not have that uh, lined up yet, I think so. All right, so now, uh, games. So let's try Doom on the. Uh, uh, so we don't have the sound, we have a sound canvas, but I don't think we're going to use that one. So again, the sound canvas here is referring to the later devices and not the MT32 specifically, right? So, no idea where the audio is going to be now. But... And the MT32 has a very specific sound. And it works. I mean, but I think this is more enhanced by using the more advanced sound devices. This is what they designed before it was in the MP32. It was the newer ones, the sound canvas. That's a much broader palette, if you will. So it sounds a lot better on there. So I'm not not shocked on that one. But it's still a cooler than just the, the general MIDI if you wanted it. So we did get Descent now, I think. Which that should sound pretty good. Is there a setup? Yep. I don't remember if this one has MP32 support specifically. Sound card is a 16, AW32, 225, 1. Music card is, okay, general MIDI. So this one probably, um, okay, we'll work with that. The month, I haven't messed with the, the settings, I've just used it for, um, if you do this, does it actually... We have to switch the emulator, so I guess I can do this now. But yeah, I have only used Month so far for MT32. Uh, the the reason I like the outer one was that it has so much. So yeah, this will sound all right on this one, but it will probably sound really good on the. Uh... So let's switch back. We'll close this. Uh, we will go back to. I have too many folders here now. Uh, MIDI player. There we go. So now if we test the music. Yeah. That sounds really good. So the way I figured out this particular VST that's kind of baked in here is kind of like an SC55 equivalent, if you will. Not not trying to be like a one-to-one, -one, but that's the generation it's trying to target. 
I mean, that's a very rich soundtrack. And that, that feels like that bridges the gap with quote unquote original music, but still cool. So, hey, Ted, you're up uh, early finally. <laughs> We're uh, messing around right now with different uh, MIDI emulation software, and uh, we're just doing general MIDI here for uh, Descent and rocking out to that amazing uh, music. Yeah, this game was certainly not the strong suit of MT32. It uh, sounds a lot better on this here. We can't load up the Yamaha one, though. Let's see what that sounds like. Actually, we can do this too. If we load up the OPL here, um, you'll get an idea on what. But this is what it would sound like on your normal Sound Blaster card. <laughs> Welcome back, Ted. But then, if we go to the Yamaha one, that's. I don't know. I found it. Very satisfying to mess with this stuff. Yeah, it sounds a little off on the Yamaha, I think, but. Let's stop and start it again. <laughs> yeah, keep the volume low. I'm getting late here, so I'm keeping the volume low in general, too, but. Yeah, we'll say. Stop that and start it again. It sounds really good in this mode, honestly. And this is again with a sound font, because we switch sound fonts, it will sound uh, quite different. Oops. So this is using the Arachno sound font, which I downloaded. But it will switch to the built in one. Stop that and start it again. It doesn't sound bad, but I think that Arachno, I see why, uh, I saw several people recommending it. Uh, and as a reminder, sound font is just a, you know, a setup of how should each instrument sound, what type of instrument. Um, I think that Arachno sounds really good, and that people recommend it, because I think it sounds, so far, there are a few ones I've tested, it sounds as the best. And the cool thing is that, like, you know, you, you do this now, and then you run the game, and then you get to listen to that awesome music and play it normal. Um, I, I'm really enjoying messing with it, because it's just, it's a level or thing that you weren't able to do, or I certainly never been able to do before, with any hardware or anything, because I surely couldn't spend the money on that kind of equipment. Any music right now? Yeah. Going. Uh, let's see. I think it gets. Yeah. It seems like it gets hung in the beginning. Every time a new track starts. I'm not sure if there's something with the software, but... Creepy music. But still, sounds really good. And then again, it stops, so... setting to change all the because that is low quality here. That sounds really good. Dark Forces, Mon 32. Yeah. Yeah, some of those sound really weird. Dark Forces is also really good. That's a true I should try that too. 
Uh, I can't remember the settings button now. Yeah, it's weird. Again, I think it's just something with the software. I haven't messed with it enough yet um, on a lot of these settings. Because, like, again, it's, you know, there's so many things you can configure, so. I think, uh... Detail levels. Highest. <laughs> That's really weird. It's like it's not initializing. There we go. And the reason I'm switching the... Now the music in the game. But the thing is that, like, you know, I'm switching games like crazy now. Uh, normally, you'd spend a little time probably getting a game going. Of course, some, some games are getting you stuck, but... I'm just playing Descent on Autopilot here, but... Which, you know, again, I mentioned earlier, too, that some... Um, of uh, the charm of playing these older games is listening to that original OPL3 soundtrack too. It is quite charming, to say the least, and it's just how you grow up with a lot of these games is listening to that. Because I mean, I certainly did not have any uh, you know sound synthesizers like this um, when I was a kid. I was playing with just whatever I think it was Sound Master 16 Vibra probably. You plays nine, hooray! Quit out of that. Register. Oh, this is the software or shareware version. Cheese. Um. So I don't think any of the other ones worked. We can try settlers, because that certainly is a month uh, or a uh, MT32 style game. Whoops. Which, again, the outer software should be able to do that just fine. We just need to figure out what's going on there. Oh, I'm selecting my MIDI input port. Uh, is there a setup? SND setup. Install. Do setup. 220. Oh, music. Um, whose card would return? Roland. There we go. Soundmaster. Pro. Yeah, I think it's Pro. Pro. Uh, it's five. Thank you very much. Not four. On, on. Okay. Your sound settings are correct. I saw the initialization. Escape. In directory to games settlers for please read me the readme file. I will not, but thank you very much. Uh, set. See if it fires up here now. There we go. So there is a game that obviously was kind of older and basically written for um, with the uh, MT32 music in mind, so. And, you know, a lot of the sounds were Amiga-like, too. Uh, the A lot of this MIDI stuff is fully compatible with Amiga and Atari of today. Uh, Atari ST was a big one to compose music with, and then Amiga will support all this stuff, too. You could, in theory, Configure all the same junk with the Amiga, I think, and do the same emulation, but. Yep. I just went right in. Yeah, this is a gr the original Settlers, which isn't nearly streamlined as Settlers 2, but clearly the music works just fine, so. You can hear it there, but I'm trying to turn it up a little bit so you can hear it. Alright, well, uh, let's see, where's the quit? There we go. I think that's enough for this machine right now. Uh, I am going to try. How the heck do you exit this game? 
There, that little check mark there, okay. Uh, I think that was all the ones I wanted to try. Um, see, I've tried a lot of games now. But I really like, I will say, uh, probably the, like, the MT32 emulation is cool. But that even standard sound from that emulator um, sounds really, really good. Um, the other one. So, what I'm going to do now is I'm going to switch this. I need to run the loopback stuff. This is getting a little tricky here now. Um, okay, so you don't have to set anything on Amiga. It just works. Nice. Um, so what I'm going to do now is I'm going to select the loopback MIDI port. And I am going to... I'm trying to remember now because there was a lot of messing around with this. Uh, let's see. You can look at your own chat. Woo! I'm trying to remember now because, let's see, we need the loop MIDI interface to run. That is running. There is a loop MIDI port. I think there was one more piece of software. That's actually installed, so we'll just try this here now. So what we're going to do now is going to switch to the mister, uh, and I'm going to power that up. I too much junk here. I mean, I called it junk. Then I need to switch that over. Let's see, I haven't done this in a while here now. There we go. I uh, was cheap enough not to get the auto switcher See if I can see it here now. No signal, okay. Can I see a signal now? Let's see, I need to, so this is the mister. Um, I need to do the alt configuration. Now I should have signal, maybe. What I'm trying to do now is just basically do it. I might just skip doing the, uh, um, on the CRT because it is a little messy. Uh, let's double check that the, oh, it did not trigger the alt configuration. Oh, I see. So, there we go, alt one. All right, let's try it again. There we go, I think I'm in a signal now on my CRT. So what I'm trying to do is basically scan double with a certain setting in the mister configuration, which is what that alternative is. So now I actually have a screen on my CRT because by default, it won't output on, on that with the VGA output. It's tricky and I'm hoping to make a video which is, you know, kind of go through some of the mister stuff because it is pretty complicated, um, some of it is. But the premise here anyway is that now we can run games and computers including the AO486 here which is the 486 core of the mister should maybe boot up or not at all well that's a new one this is the first time I've seen it for yourself wow so you get to experience a live random junk happening The that did work, so that is interesting. That was a reboot command, and that didn't work. So why won't it launch the? Huh. All right, forget it. Maybe we'll just do it the uh, hard way here. We will uh, forget about the 
uh, watching it on CRT, and I'm just going to watch it on my computer as I'm capturing here. We'll do it live! So, now, if we go into this, hopefully it should actually boot. Oh, I know what the problem is. I am just not very smart. Um, I am. I say I'm smarter than the average bear, bear, but I'm not. So, the thing with Mr. and a lot of these large uh, files is that SD cards are expensive. Micro SD cards are expensive. So this one only has like 128 gig one in it. These images for the DOS stuff is like 90 gig by itself. So I put it on external USB drive. Well, that is an actual hard drive spinning and I have to have to power it on. So, not unplugged, I just forgot to power it on. We'll do it live. Uh, so now let's go to AO486. Now it should actually boot the core. There we go. Now we're running AO, um, AO486 on the mister. So this is basically then a 486. Uh, and it has a launcher interface now. And that's just what the person who made this image that put this on here. And he put all these games on here. Uh, and this is configured now. Uh, if we look at the configuration options here, go to F12. Um, and this is what this is a core configuration. And I know the scaling is a little weird on this one. And I'm still messing with that. Again, that's what I'm talking about. There's no way to get clear pixel scaling unfortunately. So I can do here and disable the scale filter so it gets a little pixelated. They just don't have a great output on, on this core yet, unfortunately. Versus things like, you know, Genesis and Super Nintendo looks fantastic because that's, you know, that's what the people want, right? Unfortunately, on this one, it does not look fantastic yet. So I'm hoping they will update that at some point. But now, uh, we should be able to pick an abuse supported it. So let's launch that. So I think I went to setup. And I have a roll in setup. So now we can launch this. The idea that the guy that's doing this, and I'm hoping to cover it too at some point, he's doing a phenomenal job. He's taking the Exodos collection and he's basically compiling the list uh, of 300 top games mixed from different like top things um, and then providing them with a easy to use interface like this. So that if you don't know how DOS works, you can basically just smack this on your mister Launch it and boom, you're playing DOS games, right? So that just very commendable from his perspective. Uh, two four MT thirty two. We'll see if the loopback works here now. This is our inner our network, is the idea. But I may have to reconfigure it. Um, or I'm missing one of the pieces. I think. Yeah, I think I'm missing one of the pieces. So let's. The problem now is that I have like mice and keyboard everywhere here, so. But yeah, the Mister is really cool. Like if you think about what this can do, so it basically hardware emulates, and it, we'll still call it emulation. It's kind of taboo to say that because they don't want it to be equated with the Pi project, which of course is fantastic in itself. But um, the idea with this is that it emulates the hardware level, so that anything running on top of it is doesn't know anything better. So. It emulates fantastically well, like, you know, uh, Amiga, 500, uh, Atari ST, it does uh, NES, Super Nintendo, Genesis, Master System, Game Boy, Game Boy Advance. Uh, it does freaking, um, I'll say, um, Neo Geo CD <laughs> flawlessly. And the amount of development that goes into this, it feels like the beginnings of the main project, right? Things were just coming out at a fast pace. And it does arcade emulation, too. Um, and there's just so many things you can do, and for the price, then, I mean, yes, it sounds expensive, like, all in, you're probably, you know, with the configuration I have, it's over 200, but what you get from it is fantastic. It's replaced a lot of my consoles day-to-day, because -day it's so convenient, so let's see if we can figure out, because I think there was one more piece of software I had to run on here to make the address, and also I need to check what my IP address is. I am Windows 67, and I need to check configuration. Now you get to see it very live here. So what we do is we actually go into the Mr. Navigation, and what I can do is I can do um, go in here, and I can see the IP address of the device. Prompt for credentials. And go to here. 
and I think it is under Linux. Yeah, Minilink. Still trying to open that, I'm not sure why that's empty. Just not liking it. There we go. So now I need to double check the IP is correct, and that is correct. So uh, MidiLink is basically the software that links it uh, to connect to here, and I think I'm probably missing something here. The wrong configuration is clearly working because that's fine. Uh, MIDI. I'm gonna have to find the guide again for this, cause yeah. Check my downloads folder. The UDP mini, that's the guide that needs to run. Okay. The UDP, of course, is what's causing it to answer. So, there we go. Binary bond, that's probably a good sign. So now, Try that again. Maybe. Uh, MT32. I may have to start over things. I'm not sure. We'll see. But I remember now that this is running. Yep, there we go. That's very loud. Oh no, it's the year 2009. Oh crap. So, what's happening here now? Trying to keep it low here. It got very loud there. As you can see, the MT32 emulation is going strong. We are running uh, a 486 on a hardware emulator, so the Mister, which has that in the Linux component of it, so the ARM processor that sits on the same chip as the Mister, or the FPGA component, is sending it via network the MIDI connection wirelessly right now, or it's hardwired on the Mister to the wireless laptop, which is then running a listener for UDP, um, which then has a loopback component that loops itself, which lets the MT32 run like this. So now you are playing MT32 enhanced DOS games wirelessly on a small package here. Um, and I'm using the wrong mouse again because I'm not set up for this here. Uh, let's see what else we can find here. If there is one of these um, police quests here. So there's police quest 3. Is there space quest on here too? Don't think there was any space. Yeah, there's space quest. 1, 2, 4, and 5. We'll try 4 then. Set up. Uh, let's see. Sound Blaster. Music should be Roland. Thank you very much. So what this guy does, he went through all this and he configured the stuff that he knows works with uh, with the, the configuration because the Mister basically replicates a 486, uh, like I think it's equivalent to like a 90 megahertz with the math coprocessor. So think of it more as like an SX33 thereabouts um, or 50 or something like that, turbo modes. But it does not have the math coprocessor uh, or the instruction set that the Pentium has, which that's severely limited performance. But again, it's running on a single chip. So, it, you know, it's only so much you can take, right? Um, okay, installation complete. So now, I should be able to start this with, let's see, timers for MT32, which is five. And you can see, you can also pass the, the sound canvaster. You could, in theory, then pass the same signal out to a different emulator here, so you can do all this cool stuff. We'll see here if the MT32 kicks in. I think so, yeah. Not doing anything, but I see the music swelling, so yeah. Again, gives you more options. Not that I hear anything, but. But it's listening. This keyboard is thumpy. Yeah, I think it's the. Uh, it's hitting on the. The um, keyboard is mounted right next to my arm for here, so. I type with authority. Huh? It's actually just a flat. Uh, regular keyboard, but apparently this one is not working here, but you get the idea. Um, 
It is, I see the thing triggering, but I don't think it's uh, doing it correctly, obviously, so. Now where am I? There's some music. Wonder aloud to along and conjures in the city and arms differently. More me what guy that what he's trying to do as well is to try and figure out um See me on the kind of <laughs> Yeah, it's a hanging note now. That's the wrong keyboard. What he's trying to do is figure out like um which ones work, which ones don't, which ones have to be messed around with. Um but there's a lot. I think Raptor here supports that stuff. Uh, General MIDI. Sure, we'll go through 30, see if it takes it. Yeah, sound camera's not going to work, so... I don't think that's going to answer that. So it looks like we have a hung note here. Oh, it worked. So... Here's uh, Raptor Call to Shadows on MP32. <laughs> Again, it's like, it, it just the, the fact that you have this on just a computer on a chip thing is just really cool. Again, this is all hardware emulation, right? It's not running on real hardware anymore. Um, and you have this in a portable format, too. That this machine can be brought around and brought with you and plug in. I am a little curious. Let's try with the other, uh, with the other software. See if it takes that. That would be pretty cool. Uh, let's see. There is a option here somewhere to pick the. There we go. Input port. Loop back MIDI port. Yeah, there you go. So here's basically again MIDI player listening on the on the uh, Mister over network. So there's no hardware connection here now at all. But you're just passing that signal out. So I play this in years, if ever. Energy module, how do you exit there? You go. I just want to go fly. Fly mission. Realize I just uh, took chat away, so now I just keep going because I was getting stuck in this. But I again, it's it's really cool that this hardware device can do all this stuff. Because I mean, if you want to get into retro computers at this point, of course, sound or sound isn't working so well, but figure that out. Well, this would be easier if the mouse worked. <laughs> anyway, you get the idea. Um, <laughs> I should really play this for real. It's also, you know, it has some um, semi-limited interest, of course, since I have the actual real hardware here. But the fact that this exists and you can do all this, and again, you can bring it with you. And you don't have to do this, of course. You can just use the, the command line, obviously. Um, and has all the games on here. Um, in this case here, I think it's not centered. It's the wrong device, yeah. Doesn't matter, but uh, you can do all this stuff. And then also swap over and go play, you know, freaking Sonic if you want to. Um, it's just such a cool device. Because if I now go into... Um, launch the Genesis here now, I can just load up something else. Uh, what can I see it? There it is. And you have a controller, and I can play, you know, harder, accurate emulation of um, a console. You can put filters on and everything, and there's just so many things. Yeah, you're right, there's so many games all the time. Um, I think I have the, the sound incorrect or something now, but... But this runs, you know, Sonic really, really well. The cool thing here now, too, is that the um, the video output on the analog part is irrelevant of what HDMI is doing, which means that I can capture it perfectly 
Uh, I don't know if you hear any sound, but I don't, so it might just not be working correctly. Or I hardwired it incorrectly, but who knows. Um, either way, it works great. Uh, there's just so many options and so many things you can do with this thing. And the fact that the, uh, the sound works uh, as well as it does with the emulation tossing it. So I can show you what that looks like on here. Not that it's super interesting and I'm getting tired and it's rambling now, but... Uh, I will just again huge props to that guy who's building this setup here because there's so many options. So what it does is um, change some settings here if you want, and then the FI mode. Um, that might be a problem there on the speaker. Ah, I'll figure it out later. It's not what I'm here for. Um, these are the core options that are relating to this particular core, and in the hardware. So you can also select then cache things like that. Um, here is where you select the uh, link mode for the MIDI. You could set this to be local. Um, oh, I call Sonic, yeah. Yeah, the problem with doing the uh, any cheats in Sonic is that I'm cheating and I'm playing with this controller since I have so many things on here. I have a hard time remembering which ones are A and B because I'm a Nintendo kid at heart, right? That's what I grew up with, so that's what I'm used to. So when you're saying A, B, C, I got to think of what it is, and inputting codes is really hard. Um, but the idea with this is that the Mister is hardware emulation is a wired connection, makes it very, very quick. There's almost no perceptible lag, and it just runs very, very fast. Um, so you don't have to uh, like when you play on a, a RetroPie with a wireless controller with like a Bluetooth. It, it plays fine in general, but then you can feel, something feels a little bit off. It's hard to describe, but when you play this, it is so flip and direct. It's so quick, but... Anyway, this is where you set the MIDI collect connection then. And I will say that, so the Mr. again, has two parts on the chip. One is the FPGA, which is what reconfigures itself on reboot into the console of your choice. And it also has an ARM processor to handling all the, the superfluous processing. They do leverage that for some components for emulation to fill in gaps. And they also, you can run a Munt on itself. However, that is basically the equivalent to a Raspberry Pi Zero. So it's not going to be able to run that very well. I think it does run MT32 stuff, but it has like slow notes, things like that, and it can't keep up. Um, so it's, it's certainly not perfect. Um, i trying to think of what else might use. I think Doom is probably on here, right? Where's this M2? Doom. So we will do uh, General MIDI 330. Sound Blaster is fine. Launch Doom. Now we should get a dancing thing going on here with uh, the Doom music. Yeah. So here we are playing, you know, Doom emulated. But it doesn't look terrific on the CRT because again it's not native resolution. It looks, I mean, generally fine on the on the flat panel. So scaling it. Um, but it also runs quite well, faster than I thought it would. The sound effects certainly don't seem to work. But I got that. I think it's weirder because I'm not getting that sound. You can probably hear it from the speaker thing, I don't know. I haven't messed with this at all, so... I don't know exactly where the audio is being put out now, and what I am connected to, and what not, so... Oh, I think I know the problem, maybe. No? I'm not sure. I'm too tired to think of it now, but... Either way, I got the rocking... Um, soundtrack here. And see, it runs alright, but well, it runs pretty good. You probably can't hear anything, so you'll take my word for it. If you can't hear it, then uh, I apologize, but yeah, I'm too tired to think now, so I'm going to have to call it here now. But, uh, this device gives you so many options, it's nuts. Um, it's That's right, it's just so many games a little time. And so many things you can can do with this. Um, that it just gets overwhelming sometimes. And what do you play, what do you do with it, um, and the fact you can do all this stuff. And they keep releasing stuff. I mean, you can run again, I can show you real quick, but... Um, so, uh, Alt, 
Alt F12. So if we go to uh, consoles, here's Neo Geo, <laughs> which is actually sounds, you know, whatever, but it it was a it was a big deal that they could run Neo Geo. Um, let's see, we probably have um, Feel Fury. Some are gonna load, some are not, but um, this was thought to be unbelievably that it wouldn't work or not. You know, I guess I'm not sure I haven't thought about it. We certainly aren't going anywhere Thanksgiving. Uh, I guess it's on Thursday, so... Um, I don't know what my credit buttons are or anything. Normal. <laughs> yeah, something is obviously not right with the audio here, and that's on my configuration end, so... But here's running Neo Geo, um, and it, it has a lot of like, um, um, I should say as well, uh, it actually has arcade cores as well that will run arcade games, um, plenty of them actually. And all these are arcade ports where they have taken the actual original arcade board um, and uh, analyzed it to the point where they have been able to hardware replicate it. And all this is in here, there's one guy right now that's working on CPS-1, which is all your Capcom original games. Um, the original Ghosts and Ghosts, um, among other. He's working on CPS-2 or 1.5 right now, I think. But he's made all these. Here's like the arcade version of Gunsmoke, which plays on a CRT, um, you know, sideways. Because it's the original video output. So unless you do the scan doubling and scaler and all that junk, it will actually flip the screen. Because that's what it was in the arcade. Um, and you can do all that stuff, and it's just nuts that they keep adding stuff. Well, here it is launching the arcade. Like, this is what you would see in the arcade, and it would be mounted upside down, which is why you see it like this. Um, now, of course, because the video is the original video, it is erroring out and going bonkers. So. But again, things that are on there that are just basically included. So now messed up with the whole video, so let's do a cool reboot on this thing. There you go. Um... But yeah, that's uh, the long stream there now, and I realize I'm just starting to ramble now, random stuff. But the Mister is really cool. You can do a lot of cool stuff, including the MIDI thing, which was the topic of the evening. So hope you guys enjoy that, because it's fun for me to tinker with. Uh, I'm going to spend some more time to see if I can get like um, everything figured out on the Pentium Y. Some stuff works, some stuff doesn't, especially some of those original CR games. I'd love to see those working. Um, I'm awful at them, but it would be fun to get them to work, so... I probably need to download the Exodus collection. The problem with the Exodus collection, I think someone mentioned it here, right? It's a massive, massive download. It's like several hundred gig to get all of it. So it's that will be like all the DOS games you can imagine. It's like 7,000 games. So it's awesome, but boy, that's a lot of download. <laughs> um, and sifting through it. But that also means you would have a permanent repository of all the DOS games like ever made, basically. So that would be nice to have. So maybe I'll kick that torrent off at some point, but... And I really appreciate you guys coming around, so uh, let's see if there's any cats here. They usually run away because they get fed a little earlier, and then uh, they don't really come down here again after they've been fed because I'm no interest to them anymore since I'm not going to give them any food, so um, they might have disappeared. 500 gig? Goodness, yeah. I think my server doesn't even have the space for that, honestly. I have a server where I drop all my ROM files and all that good stuff, and I don't think I have enough free space on that guy to put that download on there. Um, that's a lot. I mean, storage is cheap, but I don't have to buy a bigger drive or put a different drive in there, so I probably should get it. It's clear I have a use case scenario for it, because not only um, would uh, it work on all retro machines, having the entire collection of all DOS games available, I assume all of them are of good quality. Um, I know that some may need to be configured, but the problem I'm running into now, like for example, the Monkey Island one was like a cracked version that doesn't work right. Um, so I assume the Exodus collection has been vetted that it has games that are actually true and functional. And if it has that, then I probably should download it. Because clearly, I have a use for it. So, yes, they probably have stolen my bed. Uh, the chair I'm sitting in is the favorite spot of my one cat. So when I come down to pre-prep the stream, she's always laying here. I'm like, sorry, I gotta move you, sorry. And yeah, this is always where she comes down. And I usually find some fun hairball, hairball surprises too, but 
Anyway, it's getting, getting pretty late, so I appreciate everyone sticking with us this late. Um, I am not entirely sure if I'm going to stream on Thursday. Uh, if not, I may make a makeup stream the next weekend. Again, I wish I could post to the community, but if you want to see if I'm going to stream or not, I do encourage you to follow me on Twitter. I'm not meaning that as a social media junkie thing, uh, but I do post on Twitter if I'm going to stream that day or not. So um, if you want to follow me there, you certainly can to see if I'm going to skip a stream. I do try and do every Thursday, but being Thanksgiving, my family might murder me. We'll see what happens. Who knows? <laughs> I'm joking. Don't murder me. Anyway, so um, thanks so much for sticking around so late, and uh, glad you could join us, Ted. I know it's very early for you, so get your coffee. Uh, I'm going to get some sleep now, so appreciate you guys sticking around. Uh, I will see you again soon. I am going to work on my next video pretty much all day tomorrow. I'm going to get that thing out the door and done, so expect, knock on wood, my uh, video on the uh, shuttle to come out this weekend, I'm hoping to. So. Check that out if you're interested. Otherwise, I will uh, see you guys uh, next week. So, have a good night. I gotta find where the stream is. <laughs> there we go. Click the button. End stream. See ya.